What's going on guys, T-Mart here, and today I'm bringing you guys a second video kind of recapping the events of yesterday. So earlier this afternoon I put up a video talking about all the new information we got about the Xbox One. In this video, I want to talk about all the new information we got about Call of Duty Ghosts, because there was a ton of information that was revealed yesterday. I actually uploaded the behind the scenes video, but in this one I'm going to kind of condense it all for you, take all the interviews, all the outside sources, and put it all into one to, uh, to update you guys on what's going on. So uh, let's get right into it. Now, uh, basically, Infinity Ward said that they didn't want to play it safe and do kind of the easy thing and just make Modern Warfare 4 like a lot of people expected them to do. They wanted to do the right thing, as they said. They wanted to eliminate all the creative boundaries so that they could make an entirely new Call of Duty for the next generation consoles with a new world, a new narrative, new characters, and on an all-new engine. So everything about this game is new. You know, if they made Modern Warfare 4, they kind of had to stick with the same storyline, stick with some of the same characters in the same style. With this, that they're making an entirely new kind of like series within the franchise, they get to do whatever the hell they want, which is pretty cool. And they've added in quite a few uh, new things and new features, as you would expect. Now... In terms of the campaign and the storyline, what's going to be going on? Well, rather than jumping around and, you know, following a bunch of different people in different factions and different groups and stuff, you're going to be following a specific group of individuals, a specific squad, and, and it's going to be a cast of characters that you kind of develop an emotional connection to. You know, you feel attached to them. And, and you really care what happens to the characters and, you know, the repercussions of events that happen within the campaign and things like that. So it's it's almost like you're in a really good movie or watching a really good movie. You know, you, you kind of connect with it. So uh, I think that's pretty cool, you know, because previously some of the Call of Duty campaigns have felt a little bit yellow brick roady, you know, a little bit distant. You didn't really connect with a lot of the characters uh, up until Black Ops 2. I think Black Ops 2 did a really good job of kind of introducing this emotional depthness into the campaign. And, and I think every year from here on out, each studio is going to continue to one-up each other. So, uh, so that's definitely a good thing. Now, they said that the world is going to be a major character in Ghost. So it's definitely going to have an emotional impact on the player. Uh, Mark Rubin said that, uh, that it opens up with some sort of mass event. I'm guessing like a terrorist attack or it could be a natural disaster or something like that. But it kind of cripples America, you know, it devastates their military, the government is in disarray, and, and you're kind of the underdog. You know, the campaign starts off as you as a kid, and this, you know, event happens, and then the actual campaign takes place like 10 to 15 years later. So you've grown up in this mess that is America. Uh, that happened after whatever attack or, you know, kind of bad thing that happened. And, uh, and yeah, so, you, you know, it's, it's kind of all you know. That's what your life has been. And you're also going to be fighting alongside your brother, which is, uh, which is kind of a, a cool little twist. So I'm sure he's going to play a very, very big role in the campaign. Now, now the people you're fighting with, the ghosts, you know, your squad, are a group of ex-military guys that they're kind of like a super elite fighting force. So they know all the different tactics, employ all the different techniques of modern guerrilla urban style war fighting. So, you know, it's going to be either current or maybe near future, maybe near past. I'm guessing current to near future. But uh, yeah, it's going to be like urban fighting. So it's going to be pretty cool. And, and then also on top of all that, another major introduction into the campaign is, is your dog as a part of your squadron. So he's a major addition to your squad and he's no longer just like a kill streak or just, you know, a, an animal. He's actually like a teammate. You know, he sniffs out explosives. He protects the team. He has a periscope camera on his back that lets you, you know, see different things and he can go ahead of the squad and, and he's got an earpiece that he can listen to you and, and follow your commands. And it's just, you know, he, he's a true player of the team and he's very important and I'm sure they're going to have a huge emotional twist with this dog. Like, I swear, if my dog dies in the campaign, I'll probably legitimately cry in real life because because that's the biggest, uh, that's as big of a role as he's supposed to play in this. So that should be pretty interesting. So you're fighting in a group of elite operatives with the dog and your brother, which is uh, which is pretty cool. That's kind of the premise of the campaign. Now, uh, in terms of other stuff with this game, there's a new engine, and this new engine is obviously going to bring a lot of new features and, and you know upgrades to it. One of the main things is the graphics. They've they've increased the poly count across the board. So on current gen consoles and on next gen consoles, two to three times. So the graphics are going to be two to three times better than what they were in Modern Warfare 3 on the current gen console, and they're going to be even better on the next gen console. Obviously, now on the next 
question console, there's also a new thing added called sub D, which means the closer you get to something, the more it tries to maintain its curvature. So it, overall, it's just better graphics. It means that things stay rounded when you get up close. You know, typically when you get close to a silencer or the barrel of a gun or something like that in Call of Duty, it starts to look a little bit square. You can see the straight lines in it. But with this sub D, the, uh, the engine is kind of able to think for itself and place these polys, which are what make up graphics, where they need to be at different times. So like when you're aiming down sight, it puts more polys in the gun. When you, you know, stop aiming down sight, it puts more polys in what's in front of you. So, you know, kind of adjust to whatever you're seeing on your screen. And overall, that means much, much better graphics. And it keeps the smooth curvature of things, which is, which is obviously very important. So next-gen graphics are going to be incredibly better, 10 times better, uh, 100 times better, 1,000 times better, whatever it is, uh, as you guys could imagine with this new hardware. Now, uh, not only do they just have better graphics in general, they've also got better features within the game. So there's going to be new animation features all over the place. There's a new mantle system, which instead of when you're running and, you know, sprinting and you try to mantle over something, instead of kind of stopping that awkward stop and going straight up in the air and, you know, kind of like clunkily getting over whatever it is you're trying to mantle, now when you're in sprint mode, you can just kind of like hop the thing all in one motion. You know, it, it doesn't make that stop and awkward movement. You just kind of glide right over it, which is pretty cool. They've also added in the lean feature to the console side of things. They had this on PC, but it's going to allow you to lean around walls so only your upper body is exposed rather than your full body, which is pretty cool. I'm actually interested to see how they do this on the controller, like what button combination makes you do that. It, it might be a little bit confusing, but... Anyway, there's lean, there's also a new slide feature where you can run and you can slide, you know, like on your feet instead of dolphin diving to get around a corner or, or whatever it may be to, you know, get out of the line of fire. And, and then also there's a bunch of new stuff within the map. You know, there's like interactive smoke, AI within things in the map, like fish in the underwater levels that make them swim away from you when you get near them, uh, you know, and all kinds of stuff that just, it adds to the realism of the game. So, you know, overall, obviously, on the next gen consoles, this game is going to be a lot more advanced in pretty much every way possible. Now, uh, moving on, what have we learned about multiplayer in the past couple of days? Well, we actually got quite a bit. So, uh, multiplayer obviously has been completely revamped, and they let us know about a couple of cool new things that they've added. So, uh, one is dynamic maps. Now, uh, they said they wanted the maps to be more interactive and more asymmetrical. You know, not one finite thing that never changes. They want to mix it up and, and make these maps, you know, be able to have different events within them, like these logs falling as you can see right here and and they said you know it's got everything from big earthquakes to floods to player driven actions like opening doors or setting off explosive traps or anything like that and, and all these things are just meant to kind of change the flow of the map throughout the game and keep it fresh and just make things different so uh, I don't know this um it sounds interesting you know it, it's kind of like uh, you know interactive features like scooter the train on Express and Black Ops 2 if if it's done right it can be very cool and it can be a nice addition to the map that kind of keeps it fresh and, and puts you know cool new twists on things but at the same time if they overdo it or do it in kind of stupid ways it it can definitely take away from the maps as well so it'll be interesting how they do this I'm sure they put a lot of thought into it I'm sure they're gonna do a great job with it but at the same time I think some things could get a little bit annoying like <laughs> the train on on I forget the map now but the train in Black Ops 1 on the snowy map WMD that thing was so annoying it was so loud so hopefully they stick away from things like that and stick away to more er, and stick to more cool stuff that that people really like like, which I'm sure they're gonna try to do now they also have a new feature in multiplayer that's gonna be character customization <laughs> we've been asking for this in Call of Duty for so long we finally get it so you're gonna be able to choose the head of your character his mask his body the gear you know all kinds of stuff you're gonna be able to customize your character to how you want him to look like and kind of express your personality on the battlefield which is very very cool we have all wanted this and and they finally gave it to us and they also said that they have a lot more innovations that they aren't naming at this time that we will find out in the new future near future so as soon as they start leaking that stuff I will cover it for you guys and it should be cool to see the other new you know kind of features and stuff that they've added to multiplayer now uh, you know all of this aside you know all these new features all this cool stuff hopefully it all turns out well this is still going to be Call of Duty it's still gonna be 60 frames per second it's still gonna be low latency controls it's still gonna be that super smooth game that we all know and love just improved on the surface you know it's it's still gonna be Call of Duty which is awesome you know that's what I love about Call of Duty it never changes it always feels the same 
It's just, it, it's got new stuff added into it every year. So uh, that's definitely a good thing. I know a lot of people say it sucks that Call of Duty never changes and it stays the same thing. It's just rescanned. I totally disagree with that. I, I love the fact that it's always that same smooth, uh, great multiplayer experience that, uh, that we've come to know and love. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, finally, as one of the last things in this video, I want to show some comparisons that they did of Modern Warfare 3 to the new Call of Duty Ghosts. So here's Price's head in Modern Warfare 3. Here's what the heads will look like in Call of Duty Ghosts. Here is the old attack dog from Modern Warfare 3. And, and then here's the new dog in Call of Duty Ghosts. Here are the old arms that carry your weapons in Modern Warfare 3. And here's the new ones. Notice how you can see like the arm hairs and everything. It's pretty crazy. And, and then finally, here's a jungle scene from Modern Warfare 3. And a jungle scene from Call of Duty Ghosts. So as you can see, this game is just, it's going to look absolutely amazing. And, and I cannot wait to see what they do. Now, uh, finally, as the last part of this video, I have two quick little updates for you guys of two questions that I know a lot of you guys are going to have. So, uh, one, the good news is uh, is that the Call of Duty Championships are returning, you know, that million dollar tournament. So, if if playing Call of Duty to win a million dollars interests you, you're going to have a chance to do that later this year uh, with Call of Duty Ghosts. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, the, uh, the other update that I've got for you guys that isn't so good is the fact that DLC will be available first on Xbox Live yet again. They have renewed that contract, so uh, I'm assuming it's still just going to be a month. Uh, you know, Xbox is going to get DLC a month early before PS3 and PC, which, uh, you know, it, it does suck, I'm not going to lie. But it's just, uh, it's business, I guess. So, uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this cleared up a lot of stuff for you guys and gave you a lot of new information. I've got a bunch of great videos coming soon. Check out one of the other two videos on the screen if you haven't seen them yet. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.